What's the difference between a list, a set, a map, and a sequence? Well, a list of data inside of Kotlin can be a list of anything. It can be a list of primitive values such as strings as we have here. So we have list, we have some names, Don, Tushar, Kavita, Evelyn, Felicia. This could also be a list of integers. So we could have a list of integers of one, two, you know, 12, 23, 44, 66, etc. And they can be a list of integers. It could be a list of objects. So anytime you need a list of data to be to work with, you're going to want to use a list. Now, as you can see here, the list right now is strongly typed to be a list of string. And again, if you need it to be a mutable list, you would type mutable list of, which means this is a list that you could change. So the same thing goes for almost any of the collections inside of Kotlin. If you want it to be mutable, you'll actually say slap the word mutable at the beginning. So when do you want to use a set? Well, a set, remember, only includes, includes unique items. So in this case, I've set a created a set of these four items, Don, Tushar, Don, and Tushar. Now, when we actually print these out, if we were to print it, we would see that this set actually only includes two items because a set does not allow multiple duplicates of an item inside of there. So here, it's gonna see that Don is then presented twice, so it will not add the second one. And the same thing for Tushar has been added another time, so it will not add a second one. And this result will only be in this set be Don and Tushar. So if you need your items to be unique inside of, basically you need a unique list, you're gonna wanna use a set. So what about a map? So when would you use a map? Well, a map is basically a mapping of one value to another. And I like to think of it as like a key value pair. And that's what this is, is a map right here with the helper is we have the key, which is a string and the value, which is a string. Now this does not mean that you have to always use string as string. So we could say map two, we could actually say map of, and then we could say one to Dawn, and then we could say two to Tushar. And what this does is it creates a map with the key being an integer and then the value being a string. So you can create a map of all different types of things. If you wanted to create it as an object, you could create it as its own custom object. If you had say a data class, maybe person, and we maybe had val name, and it's a string. What you could do is you could make this map turn to person Don to maybe he does Android. And we wanna have a map of person Tushar which then maps to, uh, let's say he does uh, J2EE. And at that point, we now have a map where the key is a person object and the value is a string. And of course, it could be flipped around. There's no rhyme or reason to what you would want. It's just a data structure that allows you to have a map and a key. So if you ever need to have a map and a key, you're gonna wanna use a map type data structure. All right, so when would you want to use a sequence? Now, a sequence is basically going to be anytime you want something that's going to be more highly performant. And this could be if you have a very large list, so maybe 50 million items in a list, or you have a, a bunch of items you need to process. So you have 100 items in a list, and you need to process it through a bunch of different maps. So you're going to do list.map, you know, and then you get, and you're going to do another map for whatever reason, uh, map, and then you're going to do a first reason, you're going to do a flat map, and then you're going to go from there, and you're going to do a filter, or you can do an average, uh, actually not gonna work that way, but you do map, won't work on a flat map because you have a, a list. Um, and then so you have you know some averages or, or whatever you get inside of here and you could filter and all different kinds of things. And let's say, assume all these different things had very complex you know, calculations that took a lot of time um, because lists and so forth are evaluated eagerly. Uh, a new list is created each time. Then there's actually a lesson that you can view that will show the performance metrics of actually using a sequence over large lists. And so if you need performance, you'll want to use a sequence. Now you can also take a large list and turn it into a sequence. Here, you can also turn a map and turn it into a sequence as well. So if you have a large map or a large list and you need to process it sequentially, you can just slap as sequence on there and it will process accordingly. Uh, and then you can make things very quickly. And then if for whatever reason, after you're done processing the sequence, you would like to turn that sequence into a list again, you can turn it into a list as well. Of course, you're gonna wanna measure the performance benefit. So sequence usually used for performance. Uh, so if you have large lists, large maps, or you're doing a lot of uh, mapping operations, uh, you're doing a lot of operations you know, on the, on, the, on the data structure itself, then you'll wanna go ahead and use a, 
turn it into a sequence or use a sequence if possible. Um, and of course, you can always use generate sequence. So that's the difference between a list, set, map, and sequence.